Hey guys, so we're continuing on here with the wiring on the X15 Cummins that we're retrofitting. The This is the truck that your good old commie California sent the uh, owner a letter saying that he couldn't drive his own property down the road that he pays taxes on anymore. So um, anyway, we uh, uh, are getting the X15 ECM and all the after treatment bullshit wired on it. Um, so, okay, I only code I've got left in here for the after treatment system, and I'm wiring the last one is the after treatment digital exhaust fluid dosing unit. So, let's look on here. This is Cummins Quick Serve, and so we see here I already have this wired constant battery feed, which would be going this would be pin 30 on your ECM. These are the single points, 85 and 86. This is going to be 87 going out, which would supply your after-treatment diesel exhaust fluid dosing unit, which would be the pump, basically. Um, so, you'll notice you'll have a pin 54 and a pin 79. So, let's see here. Now, let's go over to the OEM, which is a better description. But sometimes it's easy to see the way Cummins has it, the way that they show the j2 connector right by the relay that's pretty handy uh, so we go over to the uh, oem one here and let's go over so we know pin 54 is let's see if we can find it on here here's the j2 connector which okay here's pin 54 this is def pump motor return so it's going straight up to the p453 connector which is actually hooking directly to your after treatment extension harness which we don't have to wire any of that stuff because that just plugs in that goes from there to there what we're interested in is what was it pin 79 let's look at that one again yeah pin 79 going over to the relay for control power that's what we're interested in so let's go the easiest way i've found to do this is look for pin 79 pin 79 def pump relay power control gray 3232-1 and it's coming over here def pump motor relay power control and it was on pin 47 so let's go look at that and I got a feeling that's probably, I probably already took that one out, but we'll see. I had to ch charge my laptop and all my extension cords are tied up. So I had to walk clear across the shop. But anyway, it is what it is. I told my wife, is she, she's all into this fitness thing. I said, if you want to get your steps in, come to the shop, start fetching tools. She didn't like that very much. But, um, so anyways, uh, pin 47 off the J103A. Uh, let me put you here for a second. I don't know where to put you actually. Maybe in here somewhere. Pin 47A, or 47. I think I've already cut that. Damn, I might have to get my glasses. <laughs> I gotta get my glasses on, guys. I'm blind. Um, getting old i'm only some guy said the other day are you old enough to record yeah I'm, I'm almost 50 i think i'm old enough um i'm not a spring chicken anymore uh, climb back up here let's look at pin 47 again let me see if i can find it get some light on the situation got to get it closer to me where I can see uh, 45 46 40 okay so that's 45 I've already cut it so where's it at Be a gray wire. Hmm. Well, I gotta do some looking, guys. Let me find this. 
Okay, so I only got one wire on this side of this. So what we had to do here, guys, I couldn't find off the VIN number the, the exact, well, you, you can, but here's the way it works. On the newer trucks, it's all incorporated into the firewall and the fuse panels incorporated into the firewall and all that stuff. So we just found a, a, a 1919, this come off a 389, I believe, uh, fuse panel, after treatment relay panel which I knew I could make it work. Uh, so what I gotta do here, guys, is find, I got one wire left here. Well, actually two, I don't know what this one's doing yet. But I think this is gonna go right over. I've just been, cause some of the wire numbers and colors don't match up. So you gotta just verify it, it kinda, it'll really behoove you and help you to understand how a relay works and to understand what pin 30 and pin 87 and pin 85 and pin 86 does, what a normally open relay does, what a normally closed relay does. Those are things that probably would really, really help you a lot when you're doing this. You gotta understand how relays work, what control power, there's a lot of nomenclature that they're gonna use. You gotta understand what they're talking about. Um, and I've been taking a little chunk of solder wire because that's the only thing small enough to get in there i can't get my leads in there I just break a little chunk off and stick it in here where i want to test it which i already got one in there i guess um, okay got it on audible i'm just going to go for continuity and see where this wire is actually at Test it. Okay, that's the right wire. That's our control wire right there. Okay, I'm gonna fix this one up and put the after treatment relay back in it. And that should take care of that code. So basically you're going to have your three line heater relays and you're going to have your um, after treatment power relay and then your dosing unit relay. Let's go over here to quick serve again and I'll just kind of give you a little bit of a rundown. For, for those of you guys that may attempt to do this or and I've actually done a retrofit uh, that I hadn't even there's a couple retrofits guys I hadn't even shown that I've done um, that I just put I just put I went to Napa and I just bought some relay, relay blocks and some inline fuses and we did it that way too so you'll see over here it's better to show you on quick serve so you're gonna have your after treatment exhaust fluid dosing unit and they're setting them up differently with their controls on them your your line heater relays uh, your line heater relays are set up off, they're, they're using signal lines going to each side here, see where they latch. See, once this relay latches and sends the volt, that's your signal going back to your, it's gonna have three signal lines for each, one for each um, line heater to go back to the ECM off pins 40, 38, 39, and 40, okay? Um, so, You'll see your signal return, <clears throat> but your control power on this one, they're using pin three off here. That's what they're actually latching the relay with was off of pin three. And then once that you're having constant, this is your constant feed from your battery with your fuse in the relay panel and kind of the same thing over here. Um, You'll see this one's actually coming from your 14 pin crossover off pin five. It comes up, which basically you'll see if it comes over here, this is return after treatment power relay. That's coming off your J1 plug. Then it comes through your 14 pin crossover, comes up and comes into your relay. And then here is your, you'll see here supply voltage but they're using the J1 is actually grounding that terminal to latch that relay. So 
anyway we'll let's do that and then um, we'll get insight hooked back up to it after we get that one wired and we'll see if that code went away something else I wanted to go over with you guys that are new to this or getting into this field and even some of the other experienced uh, mechanics okay so on let's, let's, let's talk about uh, I won't go in too great a detail you can pull it up online once we mention this and kind of go over it just a little bit that I'm just basically going to show you what you should do um, you'll look down here okay so what happened on this when I first got everything wired after I showed you guys I had the ECM power and I went home I came back the next morning laptop would not communicate and I knew what was wrong so you're going to have what they call a 500 baud rate and a 250 baud rate B-A-U-D and the simplest way I can explain that is just how fast how many bits uh, per second information travels along the data link to communicate between the controllers or to your laptop or whatever and let's see um, okay here's your service tool connector 250k baud rate okay it's coming off 21 and 45 uh, pin 21 uh, is the data link and pin 45 going to your connector your data link connector so when I first initially did this I had it set up on 500k baud rate which comes off two different data lines coming off the ECM and I wouldn't communicate and I checked can high and can low voltage everything was right but I thought well you know that's why when I initially did it I just twisted the wires together by hand I didn't solder them. I thought, you know, I want to make sure you're not going to hurt anything by trying either or. It's not going to it's not going to screw up the ECM or nothing like that or your laptop. You know, twist the two can high can low wires together on the 500k one and if it doesn't communicate, undo them and go go twist the two together on the 250. And when I tied the 250k rate baud rate wires together, it communicated. So, um there you go. So let's take this over. Uh, let me get Insight fired up. Okay, so Insight's booting up. I got the lift pump. It's gonna, there's gonna be a code in there for that too. I got the lift pump unplugged. I don't have the inlet plumb to it yet. I got the return plumb, but I gotta make just a little longer hose for the inlet, so I don't like the lift pump sitting there running with no fuel in it. It's just like any other pump. I mean, pumps work off the fluid that they're moving through for to lubricate them too so you don't want to sit there and run that lift pump with no fuel in the system because every time you turn the key on it's going to cycle the lift pump for 30 seconds so anyway we're going to connect to the ecm and our little orange light should come on oh it's probably not going to come on if you don't have the usb cord plugged into the laptop there genius okay let's uh cancel every time i do a do that it, and try to retry for some reason it does really goofy stuff and orange lights on that means it's trying to communicate of course we're gonna have a coolant level code in there too because we have no water in it okay that lit up green now we're connected to ECM we got to wait for a work order, which we're not going to do. Okay, we're hooked up. Let's go. I don't care about the calibration right now. And we're going to have a bunch of codes in here. Of course, every time you do one of these, these are the same. I'm used to these codes when I do these, and I know what to do about them. So obviously, you're going to have your multiplexing timeout error. It's looking for either another controller or something else that's multiplexed that's set up in there that's not there it's looking for it and it's not seeing it and one of those is that stupid fuel level fuel level main tensor circuit voltage above normal or shorted to high source and i'll show you what we'll do about that later on aha uh -huh. electric lift pump obviously that's going to be a code for that because we don't have that hooked up so there we go guys our after treatment one diesel exhaust fluid dosing unit voltage above normal or shorted to high source 
it's inactive now. And come on, my right click uh, is not working here for some reason. And there she goes. Reset all codes. Turn the key switch off and click OK. I might just, I know I, I'm going against what I said, but I'm just going to let the lift pump run this one time because I'm going to plug it back in just to see, make sure no codes, things like that, which I can't really get my hand in there. Hang on a minute. I sure like doing this kind of stuff, problem solving. Okay, and so we're gonna have water in fuel indicator sensor voltage above normal or shorted to high source. Uh, ambient air temperature sensor, we gotta find that. Those are some codes that we can get rid of, I think, fairly quickly. Sometimes trying to find the ambient air temperature sensor on these trucks is a nightmare. Sometimes they put them in the mirrors, sometimes they put them on the frame rail, sometimes they put them in the battery box, sometimes they put them in front of the the grill or the you know the radio. It's just a, you never know where they're gonna put some of bitch at. Uh, that that's like 99% of the battle is finding it and tracing the wires out wherever it plugs in because I didn't I didn't do the original job of actually pulling the engine out so that's the reason I kind of like doing that sort of stuff so I keep a mental note of what I unplugged and where things were but when somebody else has done it you're kind of like just kind of well where in the hell's it at we got the original harness too that came out we might be able to tell a little bit by looking at it and seeing where the plug is for that to find it on the truck and like like Frank's truck uh, Frank's truck I couldn't even do that because it was an old B model cat didn't have an ambient air temperature sensor in it so I was uh, <laughs> you know what I did on that okay the only let's see we got so we got two after treatment codes left that's it we got an after treatment one diesel particulate filter outlet pressure data erratic intermittent or incorrect so i'm gonna get on quick serve and look that one up this one here uh diesel exhaust foot come on man i hate it when that stupid thing refreshes itself all the time and loses track of what the hell you're doing here um so we got this um, diesel particulate filter outlet pressure data rack intermittent or incorrect. And then we've got this one down here, diesel blocks wood line heater three, line heater three circuit. So something's unplugged somewhere. That one should be pretty simple. This one here, I'm not certain what's going on with this diesel particulate filter outlet pressure. That's kind of weird because Huh. Huh. Let me look at that. I that's not a circuit code. Okay guys. Uh let's go back here. I'll show you where I'm at here and the codes that I've got. All of a sudden these weren't here. These after treatment exhaust fluid level abnormal update. Uh, temperature abnormal update, all that good stuff. So um what it is, I went to, been checking multiple things, um, but you go over here to quick serve, and if you come up here, you can go down the fault code, fault code 4677 triggered by malfunction in the 1939 data link with multiple OEM faults codes. So if you read through all this, it tells you down here, um, specification, read these uh we're not gonna do the first one because all these codes pertain to mostly the engine 1894 i have that memorized that was on kevin's truck that's with the vgt actuator it's not throwing any faults with that the only codes we got 
are these three right here. It says, proceed to the linked solutions section if fault codes from the following list are active. And these three are the ones that are active. So and you can click on that, but all it does is takes you right here. <laughs> so um, disconnect after treatment diesel exhaust lid tank level temperature quality sensor from the OEM harness, which I did. And there's only four pins there. So you're gonna have vehicle power, battery power. You're gonna have a ground. So go between the ground pin and there, which I've got, I got the battery charger on right now. So I've got like 13.6 volts. And then I've got can high and can low. I have 2.5 on can high and 2.4 on can low. And it doesn't even really tell you to check that, but it just tells you um, inspect the pins and blah, blah, blah. Turn keys to measure the voltage from the after treatment diesel exhaust fluid tank level temperature quality sensor supply pin and the after treatment diesel exhaust fluid tank level temperature quality sensor return pin at the after treatment, yeah, blah, 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 OEM harness. Refer to the circuit diagram for connector pin location, which I really don't need to do. There's only four wires there. Um, your yellow and your green wire, if you look at the back side, it's going to be your can high and can low, and the other two are going to be the supply and the return. So, uh, specification. A malfunctioning engine wire and harness OEM. Let's see, wait, 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 wait. Uh, measure, measure, the thing of quality OEM harness. Reverse circuit diagram. Okay. So, where did I read? So turn the key switch off, action, key switch on. Refer to the circuit specification and malfunction engine harness, OEM, wiring harness or interconnect has been detected. The voltage is not within the specification, which it's the voltage is within specification. So what we're going after, a malfunctioning after treatment diesel exhaust with tank level temperature quality sensor has been detected that's what's wrong with it this tank i don't know where they got this tank at but this right here is bad it's not any good so it's probably all crystallized and all screwed up from the death being all dried out in there more than likely kind of wondering sometimes you can run them a while and uh you'll you never know with these things uh you can go over here to insight and go to uh well i'll get this you got to take this and drop it back down you can go to uh fluid doser pump override test kind of wonder if the pump will run Uh, I don't have any lines hooked up to it, so it doesn't really matter. See, so you hear the pump running? The pump is running, and it's yeah, it's pumping fluid right out on the ground. So there we go. So I've got another. I got a def tank upstairs, and I've got two more at home. The one upstairs off of an international, it doesn't have this on it but i've got two pack r ones at home and i think one of them has this so i might go hey guys so i went in there and got rid of one code and the reason it was throwing the the 285 timeout error code because that tells you it's looking for something that's not there and then it timed out because it couldn't find it the regen permit switch was enabled so I, I was messing around. I disabled the uh, I disabled the def tank level and temperature sensor through the CAN network, and it just threw a analog code saying it wasn't had a bad circuit. And I know for certain it's got to be that sensor because I have I have battery supply and I got and ground there and I've got CAN high and CAN low. And I've got 60 ohms of resistance on the backbone. That means that everything's where it should be. So, let's see what we got here. I'm gonna clear these right quick.
and then we'll see where we're at um so the 197 obviously is going to go away when we pour water in it and i know what to do with the 2222 the tank level code that's tricky but what i had to do is i what i do on these i you either have to have cal term to basically tell the ecm uh you know to not look for that uh so what they they originally have the tank levels sensors in the tanks on these new trucks they're they're a smart device they're set off the can network so i switch it to analog and then i add two wires to the ecm and then i think it's a hundred and twenty thousand ohm resistor i think that's what it is i think it's 120k I messed with it and messed with it for hours on Frank's truck till I finally got the right resistor and the code went away, went inactive. I soldered the resistor in there and heat shrunk it and there you go. Now these these uh, after treatment codes are all sensors that are not working correctly. Uh, we've got our power supplies and our grounds and everything that we need to have there. The uh, 3135 code is pretty easy all that is there's four wires there there's a, a ground the five volt supply well the, it's going to be the signal return and then there's the output of the center to the uh ecm the signals and uh we have five volt supply and we have return so obviously the sensor must be bad hey guys trying to remember where i left off hang on a second let me I got a smudge there. But I had uh, four after treatment codes the other day. When was it? Uh, Friday? And Friday or Saturday. Anyway, um, so I had, so here's your, this is your depth quality sensor. And it incorporates three different things in it. So it's a smart device, okay? It's only got four wires going to it. You got your can high, can low, and then you've got your power and your ground. Battery power and battery ground. Okay, which, like I'm saying, if you if you get one of these on one of the, if it's on a code where all three, it's saying, this incorporates three different things. It has your def quality sensor in it, it has your def tank temperature sensor, and it has your def tank level, all incorporated into this one assembly. And I was throwing abnormal update rate codes for all three components. And then I unplugged the four-wire plug there, and I had power and ground, and I had can high and can low, and I had 60 ohms of resistance on the what they call the backbone or the can network. So I knew with 100% certainty this was bad. And so I changed it here just a minute ago, $300 for that damn thing. And now we all those are gone except for this one diesel uh particulate filter outlet pressure and i've already checked it i've got five volts going to it and i have a signal return that's good so i've had experience with these before to where they'll do this and sometimes you'll run them and it'll go away so i'm holding off on that for right now so here's where i'm at now i'm just going through trying to get rid of codes so we know this one's going to go away. The coolant level data valid, but below normal because it's, it's got no water in it. We know that one will go away. And I think right now, so if we know that one will go away, we know that we've only got one, two, three, four, five, six codes to deal with. Okay. And these two here, I think, I think what I've got is I've got an analog position sensor and I've got a so I know this ECM was set up on the pulse width modulation throttle type because if you trace out the wiring schematic on Cummins quick serve, the pins that are that it's going to on the ECM are pulse width. If you look at the wiring schematic, the pulse, the analog comes off different pins on the ECM. So I changed it to features and parameters in uh, Insight here to uh, pulse width modulated. Um, so, um, basically, what I'm going to focus on right now, um, hang on a second. I just seen this ambient air temperature sensor, and I, I know what's going on with that. 
So that's something I kind of had jerry rigged up here for right now just to see if I was on the right wires and everything. Um, these two here. And then I've got an intake air temperature sensor, or it's actually a cylinder head temperature sensor out of a Ford pickup. Let me re... These damn things here getting away more than anything. Those uh, little, I don't know what you call them, little boots that go over that. They seem to cause more problems than anything. Let's see what that did, huh? So, okay, that's what it was. They were touching each other, making the voltage go low. Okay, so those are those two are inactive. I know what to do there. So basically, we got one, two, three, four, five codes to deal with. Five codes. Um, and I'll show you what I'm going to do with this one. This water and fuel won't... It won't kick the... It, it shouldn't kick the check, check engine light on. So... Um, the what the this this truck didn't have a water and fuel sensor, and the other one you can't get rid of it either. In uh, inside, it's a it's a uh, locked parameter. So this one here, this one's tricky. Okay, guys, fuel tank, fuel level tank, main tank sensor voltage below normal. So if you go into features and parameters, let me get this. Damn it, I got these gloves on and I can't really. Get that drug down there. So it's reading the feature information, and I'll show you. You can't really do anything with with that either. Um, so on these fuel tank, you can change that. So what they originally did on all these newer trucks, and I'll explain something that we've got to do too on this truck, okay? You're not going to have any gauges working at all. And that's because on the old... The new truck, okay, all the newer trucks, like these 579 Peterbilts and all these newer ones, they're running all the switches are CAN network. They're running off the yellow and green wire, the CAN high, CAN low. Okay, that's what they're doing them all on. So, they're all multiplexed. These older trucks are all analog gauges on these, and switches, all that stuff is. So, we're probably going to have to wire, I mean, we could, to, we could put some, we could put some in there, some uh, can gauges, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to run wires from the ECM. I'll have to look and see what we got on the actual wiring schematic. But if you come over here to fuel tank, where'd it go? Where in the hell did it go? Okay, so fuel level sensor 2. I disabled it. It was enabled. I disabled it. And that's about really all you can do. Um, you can go over here to multiplexing. Uh, right here. I'm having trouble for some reason. What are we doing here? <sighs> I don't know what's going on here. I don't... I gotta get these gloves off man cannot run this laptop with a pair of gloves on it just does not work and cancel i don't know why we're doing that um there we go now that i've got the damn gloves off so you can you'll see that all the stuff that i've got disabled here that all these things all the clutch pedal all this stuff was enabled it was all running off the can network so i've got the the diesel exhaust fluid tank temperature sensor enabled and the fluid level tanks level sensor it's enabled okay you have to um i mean if you switch them over to analog it ain't gonna it'll throw a code because it it doesn't have that style of sensor in it um 
So you come on down here and you'll look in here and there'll be a fuel level sensor. And you can you can disable it uh, like I did or enable it, but it's not going to change. All, all you're doing is if you're taking this fuel level sensor and say you enable it, you're taking it back to CAN. I've got it disabled so it's taking it to analog. So that being said, what I've got to do here is um same thing I did on Frank's truck is what we'll do is we'll find the two pins in the ECM for the fuel level main tank sensor circuit we're going to add two wires to it and then we're going to start putting a resistor in line till the code goes away I'll show you what to do there all right guys so let's go into the wiring schematic for this engine let's figure out what two pins Hopefully I can do what I did on Frank's truck. Hopefully. Um, okay. Um, trying to remember how I figured that out before. Uh, that's too big. I can't. Let's see here. Let's go. We got ambient air temperature sensor. Such... Water and fuel sensor. Um, air shut off. Fan control switch. Those are all switches. Those are not sensors. And vehicle speed sensor, starter lockout. Fan speed sensor. Okay, fuel level sensor, three wire. Fuel level sensor, two wire, right here, okay? This is where we need to be. A three wire, I think, would be a can enabled one. So I gotta figure out where these two, so it's obviously sharing a return, and it's it's sharing its signal too with that other sensor as well. What would the third one be of five volt supply to it? Yeah. So we just we're looking for the two wire setup. So we just need to find the signal and the return. And so let's find out these two blue lines right here, and they go way down here. So the signal return is off of pin 62, switch. It's already going to be there, actually. What is it sharing? It's sharing a return with all these switches, too, and it's sharing the return. 62 is a pretty important signal return line. Um, it's going over to the ambient air temperature sensor. That's that green wire. Um, so the signal line, okay? Let me go back up here so I don't lose track. So we know pin 62 is that one. The signal is this one right beside it right here. Make sure that I didn't get my wires crossed here. And let's go on down. It's the one right beside the black line, just to the left of it. And it's going on down. It's going, going. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Lost track of it there. Going on down. Man, is, I bet it's going to the 14 pin crossover. What do you want to bet? What do you want to bet? It's going to the 14 pin crossover. Yep. It is going to the 14 pin crossover off pin number 12. So, hmm, trying to think, guys, what to do here to add a wire to the J1. Do I add a wire to the J1 or do I try to tie into it somewhere? I'm not certain what to do there yet. A little bit different frank's was easier frank's i just added two wires to the j2 plug because it came off the j2 plug on frank's truck i just added two wires to that and i put a resistor in between them i had to keep playing with resistors till i got the run that one that was right but um 62 so it's this one right here now it's the furthest one over to the right which i think is going to be pin 12 coming off the 14 pin crossover and if you're not certain what a what I'm talking about, the 14-pin crossover basically is J1 plug on the ECMs, the uh, engine manufacturer. J2 
is the OEM side of it, Peterbilt. So the crossover is coming from J1 to J2, basically. You're crossing over from the Cummins side to the OEM side, if that it makes any sense. Fuel level, right there, fuel level. And you come over here, and it's coming off pin 41 off the J1 plug. So, I guess we'll see if we've got anything on the J1 plug. So let me get the J1 plug. Did I Have I unplugged it yet? No, I haven't. I'm going to unplug the J1 plug and figure out, you know what, well... Never mind. I could add a wire to that J1, and then the 12, the signal line is actually coming back through. No, because it said it was set up on a CAN network, so it's not going to be there. I was going to say that pin will not be in that crossover. Won't be there because this was not set up as that style. You can take and unplug this. 14 pin crossover which we'll do right now and I bet pin 12 I bet that wire is not there you know what it might be it's kind of interesting to find this out actually let's see what we got right today so what do we got here I can't see shit uh, these numbered anyway anyhow no numbers on this plug any oh there they are right there one two three four five six seven so seven on this side and then obviously this side, they don't have them numbered, but we can figure it out from this side. You can barely see them. So if that's one, and they're going down the line here to seven, then obviously, that's right, what I'm thinking. There goes the phone. Oh, log truck, and got in 14, and it's losing power, and they called the dealer, and I guess they said if there's no code in it they can't look at it so he says can you can you look at it i said yeah you don't have to have a code to figure out what's wrong with it anyway so there's no here's one through seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and there's no wire in there but it sure looks like it's there because i see pins oh I forgot about the jumper cables being there. Oops. Anyway, um, so if I plug that into there, and we know that this is pin 7. It would be the second one. So eight, nine. God, I get all screwed up dyslexic half the time. One through seven's on that side. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it's going to be the third one over on the bottom from the right. So there's no pin there. There's a pin there. Right there. That's it. Okay, can I add a wire right here? Because it looks like the, the signal line is actually in on this one. So let me figure out how... I don't know. I know those connectors that I've got won't work for that. I'll have to see what I'm going to do about this, guys. Okay, guys, I took a wire out of one of those other harnesses that had a 14-pin crossover that we're not using, and I added it to this one. Now we got to put the little retainer back in there, and that goes like that. Just 
just like that and that keeps all your that keeps all your pins in there to where they won't come loose see okay so now we'll plug that back in we've got a wire added there where we need it put that back up there okay guys well um that should be the wire for that and this green one up here is a signal return but i'm just going to figure out what resistor i need first let's start uh, we'll add some wire onto this real quick and go on up with it and then uh, we'll start playing with resistors okay guys so we got rid of that code as you'll see here Two, 2223 is inactive and 2222 is inactive okay um 1800 ohms 1800 is an 18 an 18 k resistor is what it finally took i'm gonna erase these and then what i'm gonna do is solder that in and, and get my split limb and get that wired where it needs to be then I'm going to wire the ambient air temperature sensor in and get that where it needs to be. And then uh, I'll move on to the next problem. Okay, so I cleared. I just wanted to show you that ambient air temperature sensor code, that'll, that'll be gone here in a little while. So I'm not worried about that one, and I'm not worried about that one. The only, I basically, I have three codes left to deal with. I have the throttle position and then i've got the water and fuel and then this one down here and then uh, once i get these she'll have a clean bill of health before we start it and then they're always stuff that comes up later what i want to do here my whole goal was is get all the codes out of it that i can get out of it key on engine off and once i know all that in the after treatment system i'm 100 percent confident in all that's ready to go now that I've got the water, I, you know, this one code here, we, we'll just have to see what happens once we get it running. But um, now, once, once I get, well, right now, actually, I could do it. I know everything underneath where the wiring is going to the def tank and the SCR catalyst. All that's good to go. So that means we can get our clutch in there. We can get our flywheel, all that stuff back in it, get the transmission back in it, get the drive line in it. Uh, we can get the actually before we do that we need to take <clears throat> before we even do that we need to get this we need to get this framework mounted we got to get this whole catalyst drop it down and get this old framework off put the new framework on mount the dpf scr the way it's supposed to be and then we can put the transmission in and all that good stuff. Okay, folks, so here's where we're at. I've only got, you know, it's active, but we know that we pour water in that thing, that code will go away. Uh, these two here have got me a little bit perplexed. Uh, so it is a pulse width modulated setup because if you look at the quick serve and i actually verified it there is no wire let me show you uh let's go over here is that it uh where was it at oops hang on i think i need to go back one yeah I'll sh i was going to show you the little schematic of that and um quick serve online is it that one is it that one is it that one it's this one okay so right here okay and i verified all my wiring three times okay both this is the pulse width modulation setup. This is the analog setup. And the analog and the pulse width modulated setup, they, sell, they, they, they share the same supply on sensor 1, and they share the same supply on sensor 2. Off pin 8, 
and pin 9 and they share the same signal return off both throttles the only difference is is the signals are different and if you I took the J2 plug off and there is no wire in uh, number 10 and there's no wire in number 64 but I've got it wired correctly it's on pin 31 and pin 55 and I have 5 volts and I have signal return so you got everything you're supposed to have the only other solution is um, and I have um, I'll show you here I've got three different throttle positions here and these are all new uh, another thing you can try is which I've already done is you can try to calibrate the throttle you can turn the key on engine off and cycle the throttle pedal full stroke three times and then turn the key off well that didn't do it either so the only other thing I can I can do which is it's got to fix it is um, is a uh, recalibrate the ECM uh, put a new NCAL with the latest calibration in it and see if it'll straighten up um, and then uh, that should take care of it I mean I don't see why it wouldn't but uh, unless them guys unless them guys were messing around there with the wiring down there and did something to the ECM that's I hope not uh, well I can go around that too. If 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 they did screw something up down there to where the throttle ain't gonna work on pulse width modulated, what I can do is I can find an older throttle position and then to save the guy money, then I can switch it with features and parameters over to analog and find an older style setup. Kind of like that one in that hay squeeze. That one in that hay squeeze was set up like this, an analog style. It actually uses as a switch, but um we'll see what happens the only for now uh i'm gonna see if i can get it running here in the next day or two there's no oil in the engine right now so another thing that i want to do uh we're gonna get it running and 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 this 3135 after treatment diesel filter outlet pressure data erratic intermittent or incorrect we'll we'll deal with that we'll get it running um, I don't even know if I'm going to worry about this. I, well, you know, I'll have to call Andy. I wonder if we can get a, a spin-on filter of some kind that has the right connector that's got the drain, you know, kind of down here that you can screw in a water or get a water separator spin-on filter with that, with that, with that plug-in on the bottom, and that would take care of that. So that might be a simple thing if we can find it. Um, but you know what, uh, we're a long ways. We've come a long ways here. We, uh, what the hell's beeping here? Yeah, my damn power probe's beeping. But, uh, anyway, I basically just really, be honest with you, I really only got two codes, uh, these two here to deal with. Uh, I, I, I Tom's, Tom's had this one on too when i did his truck and once i did the regen on it it straightened right up and then it went away so hopefully i get lucky there if not he's gonna have to buy a differential pressure sensor too but anyways another thing that i noticed about every truck that i've ever been around has got two positive leads coming off the batteries going to the starter solenoid and two grounds going to the starter this one's only got one each I don't think that's right. I don't think it's going to crank and spin over fast enough. So I'm, I'm probably going to put another, make a, two, a couple another battery cables to go down to the starter before I even attempt to start it after I get oil in it. So anyways, guys, um, that's all I'm going to do for this afternoon. But now I know for certain on the after treatment and everything underneath, uh, it's go time now. It's time to you know he's got a new clutch here but it's so the 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 sequence of events here basically uh is tomorrow morning when i get down here early i'm gonna mount this framework pull the dpf and everything lay it down there on the ground and we'll mount that framework up to the frame 
and then this this assembly here your dpf scr catalyst all sets in here now i don't know if that's going to work andy because this is set up for the i think that's i think this is set up for the older style with the two you know you had your dpf and your scr catalyst and then uh, not sure that's going to work because that's for that's the old style with the decomp tube see this new one's all one assembly it's a uh, it's all one assembly here there's no decomp tube or nothing it's all on the end line so i'm not sure if that's gonna i'm not sure if that's gonna work because that looks like the old style setup with the dpf scr you know they had them separated and the decomp tube was down here or no it'd have been over here I'm not sure if that's going to work or not. I'll have to I'll have to do a little research. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. So I guess before I even mount this, I guess I better be making damn sure that that's going to that's going to set in there some way. But anyways, guys, I'm going to roll stuff up and head home and uh, get this video put out.